I'm delighted to be back in South Africa and in Afrojan in particular. So uh, my name is Charles Gore and I am the uh, executive director of the Medicines Patent Pool. And I'll talk to you um, a little bit about what, how the Medicines Patent Pool is involved in this uh, shortly. Um, so this is going to be fairly top level, a broad description of this project. Um, so apologies to all of you who know this very well indeed. Uh, but for those of you who are new to it, I hope this will give a, a good picture of what we're trying to do with this. First of all, I should say that um, this is, um, comes under COVAX. So what happened was that on the first year anniversary of the ACT Accelerator, you know, the, the global project to address COVID-19, um, it had become apparent that there were very significant supply constraints around vaccines in particular. And the French government proposed that the ACT Accelerator, which has four pillars, COVAX for vaccines, uh, a therapeutics pillar, uh, a diagnostics pillar and a cross-cutting systems pillar should have an additional pillar to do with manufacturing supply. In the end, it was decided that the most pressing problem lay in uh, the vaccines area and so this was, became part of COVAX and became known as the Manufacturing Task Force. And it was set up with this vision of looking at how they could address the immediate needs, uh, the slightly more longer term needs, and the medium term uh, needs. So supporting this idea of trying to get vaccines, uh, a much bigger supply of vaccines, so that we could make sure they could get into particularly low and middle income countries, which were the ones suffering from the uh, supply constraints. And so they set up a sort of Workstream Zero, which is really more like a sort of secretariat to doing a lot of the, the uh, coordination, and then three work streams. And Workstream One uh, under CEPI was about trying to make sure that there weren't any raw material constraints, that there weren't um, uh, government export restrictions, uh, bottlenecks in, in the supply chain, and so on. Workstream Two was about uh, trying to do more uh, partnership working between people who had capacity and, for example, IP holders who might not have capacity. And then Workstream 3, which is a, a longer term project to try and increase the uh, sustainable capacity in low and middle income countries. And in fact, what's happening is that Workstream 2 is just being wound down. Workstream 1 will probably be wound down uh, next year in the first quarter. So actually, Workstream 3 will be the main bit of this manufacturing task force. And it is co-led by the World Health Organization and the Medicines Patent Pool. One of the, the reasons that um, the Medicines Patent Pool is involved there are actually two. One is that the chair of our board, uh, Mary Paul Kearney, um, was the assistant director general at the World Health Organization in 2006 when a very similar, in some respects, program was set up for the tech transfer of uh, pandemic influenza vaccines. And um, so she has enormous experience. But the other uh, area where we can really help this project is around the licensing because clearly there will need to be licensing in, we hope, uh, but definitely licensing out from the hub to uh, recipients of the, the technology. So the project basically is there will be a hub, uh, which is Afrogen, and Afrogen was selected uh, on the basis of a call for proposals that WHO put out. And when it was originally decided that we would have this idea of a tech transfer, they selected first of all a vaccine technology. And this was done by uh, WHO's PDVAC uh, committee. And they selected mRNA for reasons that I think are, are, are probably obvious, 
uh, its tremendous flexibility, its uh, adaptability potentially for um, other pathogens. And then they put out a call for proposals for um, a hub. And initially the idea was there might be several hubs around the world. Afrogen put in a, a bid for this. Um, and one of the reasons that they were selected is that they, they came together with BioVac um, as the first potential recipient of this technology, plus uh, a consortium around the South African Medical Research uh, Council to be able to set up the R&D to provide a pipeline of further vaccines because it is absolutely critical to this that this should be sustainable. This is not just about COVID-19. This is equally about future pandemics. And there is no point setting up something now and then letting it fall into disrepair and disuse. And when we need it again, those facilities are not available. So Workstream 3 is centered around these six uh, working groups. And so the first one is very much around the selection of the technology. And we're not just talking, I don't just mean mRNA, I mean within mRNA, which technologies uh, that you use. And then the licensing in of that, if that's possible, um, and, and obviously the licensing out. And then there's uh, a number of other working groups on product development and, and manufacturing, on the regulatory and the clinical development. This is going to be very important that uh, the hub in particular, but also actually the first recipient who's going to be responsible for phase three trials, work very closely with the local regulator to ensure that the process is as quick and as seamless as possible. And then there's one on uh, another work, um, working group four is really about the sustainable model and how this is going to work because it's not just about producing the vaccines, it, there needs to be a market for them or it won't be sustainable. And we need to make sure that in the case of uh, BioVac, for example, that African nations will buy that. Uh, there is no point setting that up and then finding that African nations in, in, in fact buy Indian vaccines. This is not going to help the sustainability. But so there's a, a very important working group there thinking about you know, what the demand is going to be uh, and how this can be made to work in a, in a properly sustainable way. And then there's uh, working group five, which is about the funding for this project. And WHO turned to the Medicines Patent Pool and asked us if we could coordinate that. Um, so I will, I will come to that in a minute. And then the governance, uh, also they asked us to set up the governance structure, um, or that's wrong, propose the governance structure. Because a lot of the governance will be done through agreements, a lot of which will be connected with the licensing. Um, and then there's a final uh, working group on workforce development. And this was originally in Workstream 2, which has now, as I said, been shut down and it's been shifted over to, to us. So um, that is under uh, WHO, um, their TDR program is going to be running that. So um, we signed a letter of intent with the, the global partners, um, WHO and the Medicines Patent Pool, and then uh, Afrogen and BioVac, and also the local and regional partners here, very important constituents of this, Africa CDC and the South African Medical Council. And much as that looks like WHO and MPP at the top of this, we aren't. We are in some respects at the bottom. We are supporting this. This is an African initiative. We are responsible under COVAX for this uh, work stream. And so we have to report on how it is, but it is really about enabling and empowering. And so uh, the key objectives, uh, so we have these three objectives, and the first one is essentially around establishing the, the technology at Afrogen as the hub. And as I said, initially there was an idea that we might have more than one hub, but in fact, 
there is only going to be one that is decided that Afrigen is perfectly capable of being the hub for the world for mRNA vaccine tech transfer. And then the second is establishing the, the manufacturing uh, at BioVac in, into a, doing the phase three and then going to commercial on that. And then, as I said, uh, the MRC and its uh, consortium of universities and other academia here in South Africa um, really providing the pipeline, doing the research that we will need, looking at the variants and, and whether we need to tweak the vaccine and so on. So um, to go into uh, a little more of the details, if um, here is a, a, a timeline which you may not be able to, to see uh, as it's small. Certainly I can't from this side of the room. Uh, <laughs> so along the bottom is the, the, the ongoing R&D that will be going on. And then what we're looking at doing is getting to, to uh, a phase one uh, within a year. And then ideally, and this is a, uh, uh, a commercialization within a three years. So a uh, very aggressive timeline on this. The funding for this is that there are a lot of initiatives around, uh, in particular, vaccine manufacturing, in particular, in Africa. And it has to be said that uh, there's a lot of the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing. And there is a real danger that this is not coordinated. And uh, the first time we put together a, a meeting of the funders, it became very clear that some governments didn't even know what their different ministries were doing, let alone knowing what other governments were doing, and how much they valued actually being all in one place to try and get more coordination about it. Because we, we do not want to get into a situation where every single country in Africa has vaccine manufacturing capability. We don't have enough demand for that. That simply isn't going to be sustainable. So this idea of coordinating it, doing it in a, in a sensible, sustainable way is extremely important. It involves, uh, avoids duplication, waste of money, going into competition when we should be cooperating. And, uh, but it's tricky to do. So the overall budget for this project is estimated at uh, 92 uh, million euros, which is about 100 million dollars, uh, over between now and, and 2026. And as you'll see on the slide, uh, for each objective, there's a, a particular uh, budget. And as I say, um, uh, Medicines Patent Pool got asked to coordinate this. So. We organized a funders forum, and this is some of the people who uh, attended. These are the main funders who attended. So as you'll see, uh, 10 or so of the major um, uh, funding countries, uh, particularly countries with uh, overseas development uh, aid, as well as the African Union, the European Commission, uh, a lot of investment or development banks and IFC are actually leading a consortium of a number of banks. Some of them, some of those that are involved in it, but there are others that aren't. Um, so significant interest and also from philanthropies. So what I think the, the Funders Forum um, clearly illustrated is how much interest there is in this project how much support it has. And I think uh, almost all of those spoke at the meeting and gave their full backing to it. And I think that's really exciting when you find a global uh, consensus that this is something that should be done. And, you know, years ago, um, uh, as part of, of TRIPS, in fact, there was... Um, uh, a commitment to do tech transfer. It was actually to least developed countries, but a lot of that has not really happened. And, and I think that if you look back, the amount of tech transfer, and particularly when you, look, when you think about cutting edge technology, hasn't really happened. So this is really an important, different project. And um, it needs the kind of support that we are seeing. So where are we on the funding? So the base cases are kind of our, our um, 
best estimate of where we are right now. So nearly 60% funded. We've got discussions ongoing that look very positive that could lead us up to 80% already. It's a very positive picture. A lot of it's uh, concentrated on the next couple of years, not surprisingly, because funders tend to have shorter term horizons. So uh, we'll need to make sure that we're funding the whole of the project. Uh, but uh, considering that that funders forum was at the end of September, and we're now at the beginning of uh, November, it's quite good progress. Um, and so a lot of this is not really allocated, so that's great. So it allows us to move it around. A lot of the funders have been extremely um, generous in their trust on the Medicines Patent Pool and WHO to put this money where we need it. And what we're trying to do is to take the earmarked funding first and pin it down and then fill the gaps. And, you know, as I said, on a good case scenario, we're about 80%. But in fact, there are at least a couple of very big donor countries who have said, come to us when you have the gaps, and we'd be very interested in, in filling them. So again, uh, extremely positive. So I'm going to end in a minute. So where we are in time in, right now is uh, Afrogen has uh, ordered a lot of equipment. There's an enormous amount of work going on around the actual technologies at the moment. Uh, BioVac are, are, are gearing up, MRC are, uh, are also getting themselves in, in position for the, the R&D part of this. So this is full on at the moment. And um, some of the next steps are that WHO is going to put out three more calls of, for expressions of interest. And the first one is to be a recipient of uh, the technology that will be transferred from Afrogen. So we have this first recipient, BioVac, in South Africa. Uh, we hope very much to get uh, more expressions of interest from other African countries. Uh, they will be asked to come with support of their government. That will be crucially important. As I said, we need governments to be brought into this, um, but it isn't just for Africa. And indeed, we already have two more recipients um, even before this call from Latin America because the um, Pan American Health Organization which is WHO's uh, America's um, regional um, uh, group uh, have already uh, got together on this and two uh, companies one in Argentina and one in Brazil have already been uh, selected so Afrogen is uh, on the point of, of starting working with them already, uh, which is very exciting. Um, and then we will hope we will get others from around the world. Then, um, because this is a much bigger project than just Africa, and I've really concentrated on the Africa part of this as, as we're here today uh, in Afrogen, but there is a, a much bigger picture. And... Um, which is for vac in increasing vaccine uh, manufacturing across low and middle income countries and, and across different platforms. So there will be another call to host uh, other technologies, non-mRNA, uh, viral vectors or whatever it might happen to be. Um, but also at the same time, there'll be a call for recipients of that technology. And the reason for that is, there's no point us setting up a hub structure if nobody's actually going to want the technology. So we've got to make sure there's the demand there uh, as well. Uh, so that will go out very shortly. And then finally, um, uh, a call for expressions of interest to host a workforce training hub. Uh, as I think we're all aware, um, workforce development is a key part of this. Finding enough trained people is a challenge in across low and middle income countries. And so what we wanted to do is to train a, a whole um, host of people across low and middle income countries in uh, biomanufacturing, essentially. So that will go out shortly. And then it's become very apparent that we need to make sure that... Um, we have a really good uh, approach to 
the publicity around this. And this is going back to what I said about trying not to have a lot of competitive um, initiatives going on. Everybody needs to know that the hub is here and that WHO has the mandate from member states to lead on this and that all the other initiatives should come to WHO, explain what they want to do so that we can then make this cooperative rather than competitive. So in order to do that, we need really to have a, a comms plan which is in development at the moment and part of that comms plan is, is something that we're doing in South Africa this week which is actually filming around the hub. So um, filming here at Afrogen, filming at, at Biovac, um, MRC, um, interviewing the key players in this uh, so that people will really understand what we're doing with the hub. And uh, the, the very short term idea is to do a film that we'll present at the ACASA meeting on uh, uh, HIV in Africa in Durban uh, next month. But it's, for much, it's a much broader project than that, and it's part of this overall comms plan. And um, uh, another thing that's really come up is how can we involve um, civil society in this project? So that is under discussion at the moment. And when I said this is a, 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 you know, a very big project for WHO, um, I gave you the governance on the South African part of this. But the governance for the whole project is uh, being discussed at WHO at the moment. And uh, the South African part will sit within that, an overall structure for this idea of, of increasing um, vaccine manufacturing capacity. Because as we know, you know, part of the terrible inequity that has happened around vaccines for COVID-19 has been because there is no local production. And even where, you know, in a particular case, a uh, developed world um, manufacturer set up a fill and finish uh, in South Africa, they then asked the product to be shipped back to Europe. And that's exactly what we're trying to avoid with this whole project. This is about Africa leading on uh, an, a local and locally owned production or vaccines. And as such, it, has, it will have an impact much beyond COVID-19, beyond this project. This is about can we empower Africa really to be producing the best, the newest, in this particular case, vaccines. And consequently about anything else, you know, that, that Africa can do this. And that's really important. And as I said at the beginning, WHO and the Medicines Patent Pool are here to support it. But ultimately, this is an African project. Thank you very much.